games can be about a lot of different things. They can be about pirates, they can be about um, taking things, they can be about um, boats, they can be about they can be about hiking, they can be about um, gathering resources, they can be about selling things. Games can be about reading people's minds. Games can be about earning points. They can be about killing people. Games can be about um, building things. They can be about taking land and keeping land. Games can be about um, remembering facts. Um, this game is about cycles and it's called In the Shadow of the Emperor. The first cycle in In the Shadow of the Emperor is a life cycle. You'll have all these um, no noblemen and noble couples and as the game goes on they get older and older until they die. They can be 15, they can be 25, 35, 45, or they can be dead. Another and related cycle is the family cycle. During the game you'll play uh, these blue and pink action cards to, to get different effects. If um, at the end of a turn, during the next turn, if you've played more pink cards or an equal number of pink cards to blue cards, um, you'll have a girl child. And the girl child you'll either be able to, um, you have two choices of what to do with her. You can try to marry her off to another player, which will give them a couple turn one of their, their solo barons into a couple, a married couple, or you can sell off your girl child to a convent for one thaler, which is the unit of money in this game. If you have played more blue cards in the previous turn, you'll have a boy child, and a boy child you can play, you, you get a new 15 year old um, baron that you can put in any electorate that you like in order to have more influence there. Here we have some of the different electorates. Um, during the game, uh, there's going to be a phase on every turn where you uh, determine who has control of an electorate. Having control of an electorate does three things. The first thing it does is it gives you a special power. Each of the electorates has a different power. Second thing it does is it gives you a vote in, um, in the emperor election, which happens subsequent. Um, the third thing that happens uh, is it gives you two points. Now you only get those two points when you first obtain an electorate. So that creates um, a, a third cycle to the game, a cycle of um, taking, elector, uh, taking control of electorates. It, th there is a lot more um, incentive for a given person to take an electorate rather than to keep an electorate. So the control of electorate cycles through different families naturally because of that as does the emperorship. The emperor has a large advantage in terms of taking electorates and getting points and they get special special privileges and treats for being emperor. And so at the end of every turn it's it's in the other players best interest to vote for a new emperor most of the time. Um, there's a special card called the rival card that people can take as, as their action. And there can only be one person who is the rival of the Emperor every turn. Whoever gets to be rival, um, the other players can either vote for them or they can vote for the Emperor. More often than not, they'll vote for them, creating an almost nat another natural cycle in terms of who controls the Emperorship. A final cycle I'd like to talk about is a cycle of Knights. The Knights are um, probably the most flexible way a player has to get control over uh, over a, an electorate. They're also the weakest. They can get pushed out by nobles. But they're easy to move around. They're easy to put down. Um, they're governed by this action card, which doesn't go away. The other action cards are finite. So um, as, as players play them, that action no longer becomes available. The knight action is always available, and so the knights during course of play are going to be moved around quite a lot in order to gain control of different electorates. All of these different cycles make the player feel like they're part of and witness to this vast machine uh, where, where the different cycles are these wheels within larger wheels, cogs. Um, the, the night cycle something of a conveyor belt moving the, the different um, nights around. It gives one the sense that they're um, privy to some time-lapse photography of a, a noble family ascending the mountain, uh, only to 
reach the top and descend again as another family ascends out of their shadow and only to replace them atop the throne. In the end what you have is a game that despite its tightness and elegance has a flavor and feeling of growth that allows you to feel like you're part of something larger than the role you are given. In the shadow of the Emperor.